Late Night Health continues, Hour 2. We're going to spend some time uh, in the second part of our hour with the president and the new CEO of the Natural Products Association. And we'll be talking about how they work with consumers, work for consumers, to protect and to educate them, as well as marketers and manufacturers of supplements and nutraceutical products. I'm really honored to spend some time now with Monty Roberts uh, from the Flag is Up Farms. He has uh, put together a unique program for returning vets. Uh, we go to Solvang, California. We go to the Flag is Up Farms and the man known as the Horse Whisperer, Mr. Monty Roberts. Monty, welcome to Late Night Health. Thank you, Mark. Glad to be with you. Before we talk about anything else, I want to talk about horses. I know okay. that doesn't have, have a lot to do with health, but I've, I've actually uh, been around a couple of uh, programs with autistic children in particular that I can think of where these kids were taught horseback riding. Yeah. There's something magical about horses. Can you put, a, can you put a, your finger on it? Sure. I have two doctorates in behavioral sciences, so I can put my finger on it. Um, they are flight animals, Mark. That means that they get away. They've survived for 50 million years on the face of this earth. That's 47 million years more than we have, 3.2. Um, they flee in the face of danger. They don't want to fight. They've never made a living off of another species, and no blade of grass has ever run from them. And something in our DNA knows from birth that they can't lie. They just respond. They react to us. And most of the time, it's to get away if we are are brutal toward them in any way, shape, or form, or we fear, frighten them in any way, shape, or form. So they get away, which means they don't trust anything. Neophytic, neo, absolutely neophobic. They will not tolerate anything they don't understand. So they have no trust. Well, returning troops and autistic children have a very difficult time trusting anybody. So what you can do is amalgamate a set of gestures, which is the silent language of the horse, one to the other, horse to human and human to horse. Amalgamate those two and cause the horse to trust the human. And when that 1,000 to 1,200-pound animal trusts the veteran and comes to him, then they feel like they can trust too, and they break down. They, they realize that this can't be a lie, and it's unbelievable. The cathartic and the very, very nu nutrition that they get from this. You know, there's no greater need on the face of this earth than health. And Absolutely. there's no greater need in any health than the brain. If, you're, if you don't have your brain, you don't have anything else. Uh, so psychological health is absolutely essential. And we send these boys and girls over there to fight. We bring them back. We take them off the ship or the airplane and say, thank you very much. And away you go. Be nice. And they can't do it. We train them not to trust. Right. You can't trust in war. And so you're working with returning vets with, who suffer from post-traumatic stress syndrome. Okay, you use the word syndrome. Right. And most psychiatrists and psychologists going back to the 60s began with this PTSD thing, right. disorder. Right. Now, Mark, you tell me about a female returning from war that's been sexually abused and beaten up and say she has a disorder. It doesn't work. And none of these people have a disorder. They were all right when they left and they came back with an injury. So I say it's PTSI. Interesting. And, and yeah, and ex-president George W. Bush Hello. just uh, did several veterans things, and he came out of it and said, we got to get rid of this D. It's an injury, not a disorder. And I've been saying that for 20 years. And you're a doctor. You know, sh you, sh you know that stuff. I know it's an injury. 
An injury can heal. A disorder is something generally that you have from birth, and it's a disorder. You don't heal from it. And a, syn- a, a syndrome you wouldn't heal from either. Uh, yeah, there's some debate about that, but um, I like the word injury because there's more potential for healing in the word injury for me. Are, are horses by nature empathetic? Do they, do, do they... What they are, Mark, is able to read our pulse rate, our adrenaline levels, and our cortisol levels. They can read it sometimes from a quarter of a mile away. Oh, my. They can read intent, and that's how they've survived. Through survival of the fittest, the one that couldn't got eaten. So when a cat is out there with its pumping heart, and these cats get very, very uh, good at hiding their sensitivities, but horses can read your intent. And when that trooper goes in there... That returnee, they they don't feel aggressive toward the horse at all. But when your professional horseman goes in there and say, you get over here, boy, and I'll tell you what to do, and they start bashing them around, you know, the whip is still the number one selling piece of equipment in the tack shops of the world. Oh, wow. And it became my mission in 1942 to see to it that this world changed to understand that violence is never the answer, particularly with horses. How do you, how do to horses, let me, refer, uh, my, my, are horses smart? I horses mean, are brilliant, Mark, in a narrow channel. They only need to know a few things, and they know those few things very well. But you can't ask a horse to do mathematics or to, you know, do the thing, they can't talk. Uh, they can't do mathematics, but they can communicate. Right. And they can read communication. When that cat opens the claw, when that cat looks them in, in the eye, they're gone. They're out of there. So I can show you how to use your eyes, your fingers, your arms, your hands, your shoulders, and emulate the cat and the grizzly bear and other predators, and the horse will understand exactly what you're saying. Now, one of my favorite shows, growing up as a kid, you're going to laugh at me, Mike. Mr. Ed. Well, Mr. Ed, before Mr. Ed, Fury. Oh. Which one? Fury, yeah. Right? Okay. And and he counted. He couldn't count. He couldn't, um, he couldn't speak, but he, yeah. he, he could, it just, he was so, he, he saved the day. He was yeah. the, he was Lassie in a yeah. horse body. Yeah. I was um, a child stunt uh, producer mm-hmm. uh, for Fury in several segments of Fury uh, way back in the 40s. When it was a film, the film series. Yeah, they had a film series. It was short, second features. Right. And um, I can tell you exactly how Fury was trained by a brutal man. Oh, no. I won't name him, but... Um, he he could count. He could paw the ground for you, right. and then stop pawing the ground, uh, so that when you said what is seven times seven, he would paw the ground forty nine times. But um, these guys that do this, they would whip his legs until the blood ran out to the ground. Oh God! And they would get him so sensitive to a whip that they could just move the whip from behind their leg, and he would paw. So they would move it the number of times needed, and he would paw each time. He was an extremely, and we had four of them, four of these black horses. Um, he, they were extremely angry, mean horses, and they wanted to kill human beings. That wasn't brought on the screen. But oftentimes you did see Fury attack people uh, if it was the bad guy. Yes, you know? always at the bad guy. He would yeah. knock them out. He would... Yeah, yeah, and the, and the thing that they use to train those horses to attack, you don't want to know. I mean, it is awful. What well, that is that is terrible. Our uh, our guest is the horse whisperer, Monty Roberts. I did not realize he had two doctorates. This is a yep. sm- smart guy. A lot of time <laughs> at school, and yep. he's currently helping veterans cope with uh, post traumatic stress injury. injury. <laughs> and I'm I'm I may not be smart, but I learn quickly. <laughs> and 
We are talking with him here on Late Night Health. Visit us on LateNightHealth.com. We're going to have a, um, we'll have a picture of Monty and uh, a link to his website as well uh, so that you can uh, see what he's doing with the returning uh, veterans. Um, I, I've got to be honest. I haven't been on a horse in over 30 years. In fact, I'm going to add another 10 to that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to add even more than that, but I we, we stop at that age, you know? Yeah. Um, I was on a date. I wasn't married, and uh, I had a girlfriend, and she wanted to go horseback riding at 11 o'clock at night, and we <laughs> did. Yeah, it was... And you needed to impress her. I needed to impress her. <laughs> and when we come back, I will explain how... I did not impress her at all because <laughs> my horse wanted to go home and go to sleep. Oh, and, sure. And frankly, so did I. All right. Uh, Bonnie and I will be back. By the way, uh, we'd like you to check us out at LateNightHealth.com, LateNightHealth.com, and like us at Facebook.com slash LateNightHealth. Mark Allen here. We'll be back to you in just a few moments. Don't go away. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. 